Would you guys believe me if I told you that I've got two amateur radio antennas in my hands? One is a VHF antenna and the other is a UHF antenna. Well, I have. These are the Farah J antennas made by a Canadian ham. I'll leave a link to the website down below. But these are made from a Faraday material and it's in a J-pole format, hence the name the Farah J. Now this Faraday tape antenna is quite a unique design. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. There may be some copper tape antennas, which I've played around in the past, but nothing that will last the test of time. Now I got mine direct from Ben, VE6SFX, who is based in Canada. And if you go and take a look at his website, which I'll link below, he also has some really interesting YouTube videos, which goes into depth on how he came up with the idea and how he started prototyping right through to the finished product. Now it's definitely worth a watch. Now these antennas weigh only around 1.4 ounces. And as you saw a moment ago, they can be compacted into a really small size. So perfect for throwing in a backpack and venturing up that hill. Just add some coax and some string or rope and you'll be able to deploy this antenna hanging off a tree branch. Now we'll test it connected to a telescopic mast in a moment. Now the Faraday material is actually sewn directly onto what looks like a wide carry strap. Now this keeps it in the format of a J-pole antenna and always in place. The antenna connection is in the form of a BNC. So again, nice and quick to connect and disconnect your coax feeder. Now either end of the Faraday antenna for both the two meter and 70 centimeters version, you'll find these neat little 3D printed fixtures. This makes it easy to connect up to some supporting string or rope to hoist it up into a tree. Okay, so let's head outside and test this antenna. So the UHF one here is on the left, it's a bit shorter, and then we've got the VHF one on the right, and obviously that's a bit longer as well. You can quite clearly see here how they're designed with that Faraday cloth into that J-pole kind of configuration. What's also nice is that they, they do put your call sign on there if you want to which just gives it a bit more of a personal kind of feel. Anyway, let's get it hooked up and uh, see how well they work. First, what we do though is connect it up to the analyzer just to see how well they work. Quite windy today though, so uh, it's gonna be interesting. So this is the Farad J antenna up on the pole. Now it's not very, not very tall, but it's probably what, four meters off the ground? It's quite windy today, so it is flapping around a bit. And I've got some LMR 400, which just kind of comes down here and uh, onto my handheld vector network analyzer. And I'll show you on the screen now the uh, SWR results. So here is the SWR plot for the 70 centimeter Far J antenna. Now starting at 425 megahertz to 445 megahertz, just so that we can cover the entire 70 centimeter band, which is between 430 and 440 megahertz, we see at 435 megahertz, there's an SWR of 1.4, which is not actually bad. In fact, all the way across the 70 centimeter band, we see a really good SWR response. Now the reading might not be as smooth as it should be, and that's because the wind is making that antenna really flap around right now. So I've got the Yaesu FT3. We're gonna see if we can pick up some stations. Now I know there's a repeater quite close to me, GB3AV, so I'll just key up, make sure that that's working. Yeah, that's absolutely end stop, which is kind of obvious, because you know how close it is. Uh, BV, might not be able to get that. Uh, MK's Milton Keynes. Oh, that's interesting. That's kind of waving around a bit, but that's to be expected considering the fact that <laughs> the antenna is flapping around uh, like a bird. Um, that's not bad. I was actually, I'm actually quite surprised. I can't actually get that repeater if I'm just using the standard rubber duck antenna. Let's try AU, that's in Amersham. Nope, wrong side of the hill. NS, nope. HR, that's Harrow, no. On you. I don't think I can actually hear it from here anyway in the garden. LT's Luton. Oh, that's interesting. It's got a very short hang time though. 
Oh yeah, that's quite strong. That's about an S8, I think. I don't know if you can actually see the screen, but that's about an S8. Oh, another repeat there in the background. TU, well that's not too far, but let's try it anyway. Yeah. Wow, I'm quite impressed. That's working extremely well, especially the Milton Keynes one, because using the rubber duck antenna that comes with the Yaesu FT3D, I know for sure that you can't you can't actually get into that repeater just using a handheld uh, from my garden. So that is working exceptionally well. That is really good. Right, I think it's time to try the two meter version now. Uh, we'll put it up on a pole and then what I'll do is I'll test the um, SWR using my handheld vector network analyzer that I used a moment ago. So let's give that a go. And do 143 megahertz to say 146 megahertz. Go back. Now the span set on my VNA is from 144 megahertz to 147 megahertz and at around 145.5 megahertz we see an SWR of around 1.9. Now, although this appears to be a little high, it's still safe to use in my opinion. Now, I would imagine that the SWR could be improved if I had tried to keep the antenna elements a little more flat rather than wrapping them around the telescopic mast. Okay, so we'll plug the radio in. And we'll try out some two meter repeaters. This cable's very stiff to work with. Instantly, this is the uh, rubber duck antenna that comes with the FT3D. It's very short, dual band. All right, turn the radio on. Now, if you can't see the screen, you just have to trust me on this. So we've got RD, that's in Reading. Wow. Okay, was not expecting that. That's like 30 over. That's 30 over. That's Reading. That's GB3RD. <laughs> I definitely would not get that with the rubber duck here in the garden at all. Not even a weak signal. Uh, VA, well that's going to be a no-brainer because that's not far from here. Yeah, absolutely end stop, fully quieting. GB3L, so Amersham, got Chilton Hills in between us, let's try it. No. Uh, BF, which is Bedford. Don't actually have any other repeaters programmed in. So we'll just see if we can put a call out on 145500. CQ2, 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 Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey calling CQ and listening. CQ2, 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 Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey calling. Let's have a little flick around. Now that... That there on 1452625, that's a simplex node. And I know where that is. That is quite far away. And I picked that not I picked that up not much better than um, than my home antenna, which is on the roof of the house. So considering how high this is off the ground, I'm uh, quite impressed. That is really good. Okay. Now, um, just to show you, this is with the rubber duck on. Um, let's go back into memory mode. This is RD. Can't even hear it with the small rubber duck. Try VA. Uh, okay, so sat down here, VA. That was about an. That's like about an S5 to six with a small rubber duck. And then it was uh, uh, 30 over using the other antenna that's up on the pole using the Farrow J. So, yeah, I'm quite impressed with the Farrow Js. They seem to work really well. I mean, obviously, I'm kind of testing it out um, in my back garden with a telescopic pole. But uh, they've got these little hooks on the top of them, which can be used to guy up into a tree, for example. So you could pull them right up in the air depending on you know how long your coax is. Uh, the coax that I've got here, this LM400, I probably wouldn't recommend to use this, especially portable. It's just far too rigid. You'd want some real flexible, low loss cable. Uh, I think Messi and Poloni do some 
which I might have to invest in. But uh, yeah, it's uh, they work. It's working really well. Excellent.